Yo, what is up, everybody? Good morning. It is morning here in Houston, at least. Uh, Morning-ish. I uh, really appreciate you guys tuning in. Hello, everyone. Like I said, it's your boy TSD back with another episode of Bullish's Top Stocks to Watch this week and why. I appreciate y'all tuning in. But before we jump into it, uh, you know, I really appreciate it. Hope this is helpful to some people. It's definitely helpful for me, like I said, to plan out my week, what I'm going to do, what I'm not going to do, most importantly. Uh, but also, this is just kind of what I'm watching. This is just my due diligence. Do your own. I can't give you advice, but still do your own. Hopefully, this helps point you in the right or, you know, a direction you're going to stay away from. Uh, but also, hey, give me a follow here on, give me a subscribe here on YouTube. It helps me feel good about myself. Uh, I really appreciate that. But also, follow me socially, real underscore bullish, wherever basically you get your your social media poison. All right, enough of that. Let's jump into it for the week. It's an interesting week last week. Things were looking really, really good. Uh, hopefully you can see my screen. If not, I'm kind of fucked. But, you know, really looked really, really good last week into I think about 10 6 when uh, we had a crazy, I call it the orange swan event, where we had like a Trump tweet, or basically, and if you look across, I'm just looking at some, uh, you know, just QQQ, DIA, and SPY, uh, basically like um, just uh, ETFs that I kind of follow, or, you know, uh, to, to that map to the larger kind of indices, I just kind of like to follow these and play them from there when I can. But basically, if you look across, around the same time, you know, 10.6, if you look at DIA, 10.6, uh, the SPY one, yeah, around ten six, all of them. Hey, it wasn't a, a it wasn't a coincidence. We took a big shit, uh, and that was kind of kind of from a dick move, in my opinion, from President Trump. He kind of said, or you know, Donald Trump just said, hey, basically, you know, he's going to cancel the stimulus talks until early, until after the elections. There's going to be like a massive stimulus bill after that, after he gets reelected. He told his reps to kind of pause negotiations, and so after the elections, like I said, kind of a dick move. And over the next. A couple of days, he kind of backtracked on that. And now I think it, early into this week, he's like, uh, a stimulus is looking more and more important to him. Uh, but the damage is already done, as you see, kind of sell offs off 10 6. The damage is already done. You know, markets kind of, you know, they don't like uncertainty. And that was definitely uncertain uh, what, what was going to happen. Um, but, you know, in the since then, you know, he's kind of backtracked and said, hey, we need a raise. Because I think uh, one side was at 1.6, the other side was at like 2.2 trillion. And then, and I think that the latest thing that I saw was, you know, maybe like a 1.8 kind of uh, trillion. Um, you know, a number being talked about by the White House. I don't think either side is happy with that. So we'll see how that goes. But that kind of goes into, hey, those stimulus hopes, those hopes are carrying into this week. People seem optimistic that something can happen before the election. I think it's probably going to be after the election, to be honest. I'm not sure, but we should find out more this week. Uh, if things break down again, like you said, you know, as we saw with that, that really hard sell off, those really hard sell offs here. Um, you know, if, if that kind of happens again and we see those stalled, you could see kind of, you know, uh, s some some negative uh, market reaction um, if things break down again um, across all indices, as we're seeing here. Um, but also, you know, with the in, looking into next week as well, you know, stimulus talks, continuous stimulus talks. We also have earnings seasons kicking off with banks. So that should be interesting. And I think this should also shape the next. So the next, you know, a uh, couple weeks are going to shake the next couple months, in my opinion, um, like kind of where the market's going to go based on these earnings coming in from the banks and everything else to follow. So over the next couple weeks to me is going to shape, like I said, how the next couple months is going to plan pan out. But if you see if we're looking specifically, I like to look at tech. And, uh, specifically right now, as we kind of see here, we had that really hard down sell. You see it here if you break it down to the hour level. You know, you know, uh, yeah, it was about, you know, yeah, about, you know, one o'clock my time. You know, hey, bam, you see really hard re market reaction for that. And it sucks because we were doing so well early into the early into last week. You know, uh, we were doing really good for the past few trading days. And then that kind of happens. The market seems to rebound a little bit from that, but it definitely, especially if you look at this channel, specifically we're talking about QQQ, it definitely busted out of the channel that we were having like a really, really great channel that just comes out and just kind of ruins it for us. Uh, but hey, that's 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 kind of what happens when you play a thing. I call it, like I said, Orange Swan event. If I break down the Q though, specifically looking at kind of why I am cautiously optimistic, but more cautiously than optimistic for the next week, is 
because you do see a break out of that channel. We don't like that shit at all. But also kind of volume. If you look, if you look at the year day over days, volume was a little bit weird, you know, a little bit wonky. People, you know, that, that happens. People get spooked. Everyone sells off basically, right? Hey, that above average comes in, people sell off. And then the next, like we're trying to be bullish again, uh, but the volume over average isn't there. But the great things that is looking at this chart right here, the great things, if you're looking at specifically, you know, at tech, because that's what I want to look at now, uh, you do see RSI picking up and you do see after that original nine two sell off, you definitely see bearish kind of tendencies here. And that basically lasted until, you know, yeah, 10 one. Right. And we definitely see some that MACD moving moving average convergence, divergence, turning from bearish over to bullish uh, after, at about the start of the month. Uh, so we're a couple weeks into that. But you see yeah, MACD coming back, looking like it wants to be more bullish overall. We just need some help. Uh, we need some like people to not tweet as much, maybe. Uh, but yeah, that, that's kind of what I, I'm cautiously optimistic, but more cautiously, um, especially since we have a lot of stuff come that are baking into into the next couple weeks. But anyways, let me jump into the top stocks I'm watching for the week and why. And of course, no surprise. Hey, I'm watching Tesla again. Whoa. And I think for me specifically, the reason why I'm watching it more for the reversal play, uh, we have earnings coming up 1028. We're in 10.11 right now, so in about two and a half weeks, we have Tesla earnings coming out. And the reason why I want to watch this now and the reason why I think it's good, I'm always going to watch Tesla, but the reason I'm kind of looking into it now more so is because, you know, definitely delivery numbers came out. I think it was last week and it was 139,300 versus the original goal of 137,000 expectations for the quarter. Um, so, you know, I think that bodes well into the uh into the earnings season uh if you kind of look at it here too we've been in a really hard channel and i'll kind of go into why i say that now but if you just look at the chart hey we're in like a really weird like flag uh like ascending almost descending triangle though but we're playing between there so i think eventually we're going to squeeze out of this little pattern uh but we just haven't shown it yet and i think it's going to take numbers i think it's going to take you know uh, in my opinion they're probably going to take you know really good uh, you know, quarter deliver, uh, quarter uh, expect uh, ER report, right? Uh, but but still, recently this past week, tons of good press. Last week, there's a new street upgrade to buy, to a buy rating with a 578 price target up from 400. Um, and, and another leaked email came out. I forgot what day it was, but there was basically a leaked email. Tons of Tesla news recently. A leaked email again that came out that said, "Hey, they could they could break the 500,000 uh, production number in 2020." The last leak that we saw, for the last email leak we saw was true uh so hey i think that bodes well to kind of this one as well uh so i think that would be cool we did see uh, and you know kind of going into you know when trump came in and shitted on everything early in the week we did see a really hard sell-off here yeah exactly see around around three o'clock you know uh we did see a really hard sell-off to 406 i was actually out of it already because i just felt something was up i just didn't like it i didn't like you know everything was good, like things were going my way all at once and that usually doesn't happen so i was like oh shit let me just let me just get out while i'm ahead but we did see that really hard spike to 406 but the great thing about tesla spikes it sucks but also it rebounds super nicely to that and that's kind of what i'm looking for next until we have a big mover like a earnings or something that comes in i'm looking for those spikes downs those gap fills down those gap fills up that's exactly how i'm trying to play this for the next probably couple weeks until we start getting some more news come in for tesla and like i said earnings and stuff oh uh, yeah after the tweet it, it hit like, like i said right here 406 really really hard but but still within i don't know what is it a trading day basically uh, a little bit more than a trading day it's still rebounded to the like more or less the 439 and before 450 for tesla was the uh those the resistance line but that's actually it looks like it keeps on coming down because of the you know like i said this triangle coming down yeah about 450 460 was it for a while that was that really hard resistance here 454 i remember that one specifically but it looks like that that really hard resistance is slowly moving down but also the amount that it's bouncing from so its support is slowly going up too i think that's a nice little triangle it's still gonna i think play between that region for a while so it's a nice pattern setup for me to to go in and feel comfortable with it right now i probably wouldn't i'm not as excited into it now um into, into like buying into it now no i want to see what it's going to do from here if it kind of reverses and bounces off of this triangle line that i kind of saw here uh we'll see how it goes um but yeah we have really strong resistance at 450 before and that's kind of moved down to a 440 area 
So definitely, and that's kind of what we're sitting at now, a little bit less. So we'll see how it plays for that. But Tesla, to me, uh, it, and that that kind of sparked my interest in other kind of. Uh, so I'm watching Tesla, of course, but although also EV ETFs. And what do I mean by that? An ETF, you know, I think we all you know exchange traded fund, you know, a collection of things. But there's a couple that I've been looking at, and a couple that I've been kind of. Uh, well, one of them I'm playing. I'm not gonna tell you which one, but basically two of them, right? That I was looking at really, really closely over the last couple of days. And this is Drive. So I'm looking at Drive and I'm looking at iDrive because I like, so like I said, there's a lot of uncertainty for me and I don't like to be uncertain. Um, I love Tesla and I love EV. I love tech. I love EV. I think that's the play and that's what people are going to into the future. But for the next couple of weeks, I just don't know what's going to happen. So I want to play an ETF for this really or start looking into that more. The reason I like these two specifically because uh, the charts are sexy as hell. So this drive, you know, trading a little bit lower at 1809, I think that's a really good price for that. But it's kind of in the middle right now. And with ETFs, it's a little bit weird because, you know, they, they just trade a lot slower, you know. So you don't, ex and that's why I, I, that's what brings me to them now. They're EVs, you know, it's an ETF, but also they have really, really sexy ass fucking charts, you know. Um, you know, if you look at this one for drive, hey, the MACD is picking up, but it, the, the, sorry, the RSI is picking up. It can go all the way up 70 if you look over the past year, you know, you definitely have some really good stuff here. Uh, you know, volumes coming in for this really good volume, uh, breaking, breaking resistance channel. It has a really good channel. It's been on an uptrend. You see kind of here uh, the MACD picking up and just being more uh bullish right that moving average conversion diverge is looking good uh the rsi is picking up as well so maybe uh, as we test this next uh this next level here that it did touch before i think previously um of uh you know about 815 or, or no, a little bit over 815 uh 834 yeah we'll see how it plays with that uh it did break it pre-market on friday i want to say uh so it bounced off of that but it's cool it's making higher highs which i love um for etl specifically it's moving the right direction it just broke a really important uh, area of resistance and what i mean by that that area resistance it broke was about 18 dollars. so now it's kind of cooling off you know taking some time but also since it made that it can probably gap up is what i'm saying it's going in the right direction for me overall. And if you break it into the, the year, it has a really nice almost like cup and handle here. Um, and I really enjoy that look of it, that little cup and handle, 30% or more increase up. You know, some some weeks that came in where the selling was really hot, selling, selling. Uh, you see a little, uh, uh, you know, over average selling here as well. It's finally broken this original lip of it. And I think we'll see kind of uh, some more continuation that way. That being said, though, I do think it's bullish overall. I will say, hey, I want to wait to see what it's going to do with this. If it bounces off of this price target that it reached before of 1835 and maybe get it at a better price price or it breaks that and keeps going i'm gonna play that i could i can see playing that either way so drive is another one drive is one that i'm watching along with tesla and i'm kind of more opportunistic like momentum scalping with tesla but these i think are really strong plays especially especially as uh more companies really start investing in ev and more people want to consume that as well right uh, a lot of tailwinds there which i'm excited about the other the other etf for uh, EVs that I'm watching is iDrive. And this one is actually really interesting. And so both of them are kind of, I like them because of the diversity of the ETFs. So even though they're kind of EV focused, they have a lot of stuff. If you look at the groupings, they have uh, they have tech, they have consumer, industrials, basic materials. So it's not just like it's all EV plays. You know, there's a majority of them are, uh, you know, I think I want to say 40% of them are, you know, basically in tech, but they're, they're kind of spread out. And these, both of these have different ways that they put into different groupings. I think this one's uh, stronger specifically or has more in, uh, has less in basic materials and more in consumer. Um, but, uh, but, but still consumers hot, tech's hot, industrial is hot, basic materials are hot. Those are all hot groupings. If you look at like the grouping settings over the past, you know, a uh, month, to three months you know these are still hot but i like this one as well uh looking at i drive to, to to position against the other one uh drive because it actually just broke a super hair super hairy important resistance level uh, you know 34 about 35 bucks and now i think that's a good price to come in uh you know once volume comes in we're seeing rsi picking up here um, and then this this thing is a hot hot travel just like the other one eighty it can it has a push of RSI about eighty one can do that shit with no problem MACD is still really bullish it's coming out of a bearish uh, sentiment like you know after you know about eight twenty eight when shit started cooling off cool cool it was consolidating moving kind of sideways had some good stuff come in it was trying to break this area of resistance you know thirty five bucks and it finally did just so but I think that that gives you a good area to try to go in and set a plan a plan is what I, when I and when I say a plan, I'm saying, hey, like it finally broke this area of resistance. Great. 
my price target is this. If it bounces lower than this, you know, 35 line and closes significantly, maybe that's when I put my stop loss in. But for me, that allows me a really good, a really easy way to do it. So that's kind of what I was. That, that was actually three and one. So that's going to count as three. I'm going to say Tesla, uh, uh, EV specifically uh, for, for uh, or ETS specifically for EV. I like iDrive. I like Drive. Those are two, three of the ones that I'm looking at. Definitely playing at least one of them. I'm just going to say that right now. Uh, swinging those mugs into the next week. Uh, and probably beyond too. You know, ETFs, I don't really play them because they're kind of boring to me. But also I think boring right now, especially as we kind of figure out what the election is going to look like, what the stimulus is going to look like. There's so many question marks. Uh, so I want to put my money in a safe kind of almost active passive revenue or uh, avenue to kind of grow while I kind of wait to see what, what's going to shake out. And I think ETF specifically like an EV ETF is a really, really uh, uh, not good way to do it for me, I guess. It, it's, it's a good one for me. The other one I want to look at going into basically the fourth one is hopefully this is a quick show. I got to watch my Texans lose and then I got to watch the Astros win and then I got to watch Lake Show come in and win. So it was a big sports day for me. So I got to get this coffee and I got to finish this real quick. That's the wrong Apple. I've done that so many times before. Okay, Apple. I don't know why I keep doing that. The other one I'm going to look at is Apple. And the reason I'm watching Apple is because there's actually an iPhone event on 10-13. We are at 10-11, so that makes 10-13 Tuesday. Tuesday afternoon, there's an Apple event. And they have actual earnings on 10-29. So, man, 10-28, 10-29 are going to be fucking great for tech. Uh, hopefully, because we have, like I said, the Tesla earnings on 10-28. We have the Apple earnings on 10-29. But specifically, why I like this one is the 1013 for Apple this week. Uh, you see this really, really great run up. Run it, run it, run it. Uh, but also, um, what I wanted to show with this one specifically, uh, if you kind of look at the day over day chart, uh, we can kind of go into it a little bit. Uh, I really love Apple for the, you know, they're, they're, they have, like I said, the event. There's a 5G it's like the, the start of the 5G era, 5G wireless era. Why don't we go to just 6G already? I don't know. I'm no developer. But basically, we have the new 5G era kind of sparking off with this iPhone 12 event that's going to happen on 1013. We did have, and, and and for me, when I've followed Apple for a while, I haven't I hadn't traded them until more recently into this year. Um, but also, like when I was tracking events, I was always an, interested in events. I'm an Apple fanboy. I got Apple Watch. I got earbuds. I got the phone. I got a Mac. I just I'm just so ingrained in Apple uh, at this point. So I just love the offerings. Uh, I'm a fan, but not a fanboy. Maybe I'm a fanboy actually. But anyways, as I watch these events, I notice a really interesting pattern that kind of transcends all events. You have the event at a day, a specific day, but then two to three days before that date, you have the run up for the stock price that culminates into the sell off usually of the event. Um, and we kind of saw that with the last event that I kind of poked out here in the charts. Yeah, you have about two to three days where you have a build up sharp sell off about, you know, two to three percent within the event date. And then usually it kind of it, it kind of goes low from there and kind of, you know, it, uh, cools off from that point. Um, and to, to like a reversal play, right? Um, and we saw that on 915. Uh, so let's see if I'm looking at it correctly here. So yeah, 915 was the last Apple event, but I will say that there's a few things that baked into this event. This was in a clear downtrend, first of all, after that kind of 92 overall, but mostly tech sell-off that happened in 92. So early, you know, in, in the month, that month, it was still in a, a negative downtrend for that time so the event was a little bit different than it was a lot different than it is now but that event was actually so usually apple does all their you know their one event they show the iphone they show the new hotness for mac they show the you know watch the airpods earbuds whatever they actually split it up so that's what people didn't like already that there wasn't one event i liked it because that was to me two catalysts that were separated now but also you had a really really sharp people just hated that event i remember kind of watching it as it was going on and just seeing the share price just tank like midway through the event when people we're finally realizing oh shit they're not going to show the iphone which is the big driver uh for for the for you know those those later in the year apple events uh to me i wasn't too worried about that but still you know all that to say hey I, that's how I'm more planning to play or how I'm currently playing. Uh, Apple is getting in a couple days before the event, looking for that kind of softness during the event or maybe the day of the event and sell and, and then in an exit position or scale out of position. Because you definitely see, as we said, 915. Hey, that was the actual event. You see, even though it's in a clear downtrend uh, before the event on nine, you know, nine eleven, nine ten, it hit that uh on the year day over day chart, that moving average 50, so the, the expansion uh, EMA 50, right? It bounced off of that, came to the actual event, and then just sold off 
really strong for you know a couple weeks, maybe a week after the event when they finally found new support here at the, about the 104 level. So all that to say, hey, play with caution. There's If you look back to past Apple events, there's a clear pattern that you can play. But I do think that this event is going to be very different because we're not in a downtrend anymore because this is actually the thing that people wanted to see last time which is the iphone the new 5g hotness era kicking off iphone 12 hotness kicking off so that's why i like it and that's how i'm gonna play it already full disclosure i started playing it already uh, so i'm probably already gonna scale out of this position uh soon um or at least start looking at it but you know definitely you know you had that really strong uh, especially after the Trump tweet, hey, hit 112. To me, that was a clear indication that, hey, it, even with that shit, it wasn't going to sell below l lower than that. So I felt comfortable getting in at that price. It was so. It was then later identified or solidified to me because specifically it tried, it tested it again after hours. It tried to break below that 112, 25 mark. Still didn't do it. And from there, clear uptrend all the way, you know, six bucks basically to 118. 118 was a really a hard area of support of resistance because it's uh you know about that that it traded for the event before so i think this is going to be the real test monday tuesday to kind of see if we can break that and if we can break that it's going to be a really interesting ride up especially if markets react well to it of course you're going to need other things to play you're going to need trump to stop tweeting you're going to like hopefully don't have like a total shit or breakdown of the stimulus talks until then. So there's a lot of stuff baked into that. So like I said, hey, protect your chicken because you're going to have to. No one else is going to. But still going in the right direction. Hopefully we break this. Yeah, we're pretty close. After hours, it broke 118. We need about another 50 cents to kind of break that new area of resistance. And once it does that and makes that a support, oh, shit, hold on. You know, it's going to be real nice. Sorry, I'm going to drink this coffee real quick. Oh, that was good. All right. The, the last and final one that I'm watching for the week is AMD. And the reason why I'm watching AMD is because they have an acquisition that should close this week with Zil Zilix, Zilnix, Zilbix. I don't know how to say it. But anyways, it's an acquisition worth thirty billion. I will say though that the markets overall didn't really react well to this news, this acquisition news originally when it came out. For AMD, I think AMD uh, for the week was down like four percent or something like that. But on the opposite, Zilnix, Zilix. Was Zilix, I think, was up, you know, about 14, 15 percent for the week. So I think that, you know, once the market digests this, we'll, we'll kind of see where it shakes out. But I like it because for a few, I like, I've liked AMD for a long time. I was actually waiting for it to come out of this downtrend. It's, it really did use it as consolidation. If you're looking back at year, you know, it definitely wasn't a clear downtrend with a tech sell off. It really held the support here really nicely at 74. Uh, played it a couple times, but not too much success because I was more impatient than anything. I missed originally the, the, the kind of uptrend here. And you would definitely see it if you were watching this. The other reason I didn't like it because there was no volume over average coming in. So I want to see volume over average coming before I feel comfortable using my money into it. Uh, but there are a few things I like about this, specifically AMD. Hey, acquisition talks, right? Even though markets originally didn't react well for this for AMD, it could be a lot of things. People think maybe that they're paying too much for it. I think it's a great deal because AMD has so much money built up, especially like as people are moving to be more, um, you know, for those like those COVID plays that are all cloud and tech. This is exactly what this is for. So um, the Zilnix is basically, you know, a chip manufacturer, but it's like a different type of chip, you know, where you can kind of pre uh, reprogram it to do a couple of different things versus having a chip that's made just for this. Um, but anyways, yeah, I think that that's going to, it's going to be a really strong play for their, uh, for their overall business boosting their chip semiconductor competition you know that's a telecom play that's a defense government play that's a cloud play um and you know that's just and, and you know i love that i love those kind of those plays that transcends different markets and i think that's what that that's what this acquisition is going to give uh basically uh for amd but also we saw as we looked at last week we i looked at nvidia for the gts conference which which went really well i sold off basically that whole position um I sold off before the sell off, which was great, but also because, you know, if you look back at AMD, you know, it was a great it was a great play, like I said, coming into uh, basically coming into that event. But it definitely was a hard sell off, especially when Trump kind of came out and tweeted tweeted his his nonsense or whatever his his news or whatever you want to call it uh definitely hard downtrend i was watching this for a while you know definitely got out but also i was so 10 6 was that yeah 10 6 was tuesday so i was basically once i saw that it couldn't break when i was watching this 
And I saw that it wasn't going to break this area of resistance. This really strong that we had already identified, like we identified 565. It wasn't going to break the, it tried twice. It wasn't going to do it. I got out um, and I was looking for a re-entry. I just never actually did it. Okay. That they, Hey, you know, it didn't go that way. But also what was interesting about that was this boost right here that you see was basically, you can time it to the arms the, the NVIDIA ARMS developer conference. And that's kind of the position that AMD is taking with their acquisition of Zillnet. So I think that it's a, there's a lot of play into that. The, I think the market, when they kind of absorb this news, are going to react really well to this because this gives them that that avenue. It's, it's basically, you know, a partnering with someone that gives them that next step as NVIDIA was doing with ARMS, right? Doing that conductor play. And, and hey, markets really liked uh, that whole thing. It just couldn't break it. We had, you know, it was a combination of bad things. It was trying again uh, later in the day. And I had hopes for this, uh, this boost here. Uh, it just didn't do it. And then Trump kind of came in with that tweet. You see a really hard sell off. Uh, markets were not reacting really well to it. So, oh, well, you know, that that's how it goes. Uh, still was able to take some out of top, which is great for me. But anyways, wasn't great for everyone. I get it. But also the thing about NVIDIA um, for them is that if you look at the holiday season to come, right, this hotness that we call the holiday season, what's coming out? The console wars. Oh, shit. We got Xbox. We got PS5. Oh man, like they're fighting against each other. They're 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 trying to get market share. But you know who wins out of each cell from each side? AMD. You know why I say that? Is because both the Xbox and the PlayStation 5 uh both use the AMD 8 core Zen 2 CPU. So it's not like you know, like one company has one and one the other. They're both using AMD's processor. You know, they're both using that as their brain, as their power driver. Uh, so each cell that comes in from the console wars goes straight to NVIDIA's pocket or sorry to AMD's pocket. Sorry. Um, and as we know, hey, season's coming up. Gaming has been super hot during COVID. COVID has made gamers even more like uh, uh, like deep in people's um love and appreciation. I'm a gamer. I love it, you know, uh, and I kind of see it, you know, especially in the past few years, but COVID, I think accelerated that gaming trend and people going in and, and playing games and, and it, you know, using your phone to play games, which if you use, if you play games on your phone, you're a gamer, I'm sorry. Uh, but you know, and that's kind of like the gateway game to the new consoles that are being more of a family entertainment system, uh, slash console. So like I said, Hey, a holiday season coming up, that's just another tailwind for AMD because they have chips in both of the new consoles and with that with that console war heating up some people like saying i'm gonna buy both consoles that's just two sales for amd it just makes sense uh, also i like amd i'm excited about amd this week actually uh, probably the one i'm most excited about but i won't say that out loud i just did but also i like amd is because if you look at the week i just got this new book i don't know where it is uh, maybe I'll link it somewhere. Uh, it was not a new book. I had it for a couple weeks. Uh, but anyways, they have a really, really sexy ass cup and handle on the three weeks. And what I liked about this book that it's teaching me is to look a little bit further back in time. And because I usually look days or you know, uh, you know, hours, five minutes, one minute. Uh, that's kind of the day trader in me. But when you step back for swings and you look at the week level, you get like a you take a step back and you get a broader picture of how it fits in with the bigger market. And what it does show me is how to kind of spot cup and handles on the week level level a little bit better and what you see here with with uh amd or in oh shit i'm looking at nvidia i'm looking at but well, that's still cup and handle rolling nice there uh basically sorry uh let's see let's go back to amd boom this is one i was like yeah i know i saw that already uh but both of them are kind of marrying each other which is kind of interesting but if you look at amd's kind of cup and handle here hey really you know 30 percent uptick to here you know cup lip formed you see a sell-off here. You see descending of volume come in for trading, right? So you look at this original cup. You see this clear kind of downtrend, clear uptrend here. You see the same thing with uh, with volume coming in. A little bit lower, a little bit lower selling volume coming in. And then this buying power trying to keep up. And then you see it kind of meandering here because uh, basically for a cup, you have the cup and you have the handle. And you usually see a little bit of dip with the handle, which you do see here. It kind of culminated down. And then at the end of that, right? So if you look basically right here, look at the end of it. Selling is exhausted, right? And you know that because there's no more over average selling coming in for this. This is the average line line for volume this is the selling it's a red candle it's not at this line anymore or above but what you do see is the buying power come in boom sellers are exhausted buyers coming in buyers buying up shit buying that handle next high over here let's go you know what i'm saying oh i can't mark anything let's go anyways uh but interestingly enough you see that same shit happening 
here pretty soon. So I like that. You kind of see the same thing coming in here. You see that buying pressure kind of ease. You see selling pressure coming in. You see selling pressure kind of getting exhausted at some point, right? And then you see similar kind of story. You see seller or buyers start trying to come in and play into this sphere. You see RSI picking up. You see MACD kind of rubbing, but also haven't having converged. It wanted to converge. It didn't converge. And hopefully here soon, this blue line goes up. This line keeps on going this way or down. Uh, but also, I think you'll like, as you notice with this one, once it breaks this uh, area here, this cup breaks this, you'll see the pressure come in. It hasn't got there yet. Uh, the pressure is going to be at 93.43 or whatever that is, 94.28. Uh, so I think that once we, so maybe it's a little bit early right now, but I think that once it finally breaks that, we're going to see that same kind of increase here that's going to like push it up. Once it does break this uh, level of, man, I'm just writing shit everywhere. Once it really does break this level of, um, you know, resistance here, by the break of that, and we'll see kind of like some new uh, some new buying pressure coming in. Man, I can't press anything. We'll see some new buying pressure coming in as well. I'm trying to show uh, here because you do see buying pressure come, buying volume coming in, just not over average. And like I said, I don't really like to do anything until it's over average and I feel comfortable wasting or not using my money in, in the right way there. But anyways, I really appreciate you guys tuning in for that. That was five. Let me run through them again real quick. We had Tesla and also from that EV plays in general, I drive and drive. I like the, I like the, the, EV ETF plays a little bit more than uh, other ones now because it's safer to me, but it's also in a hot grouping, a hot environment. It's in a hot grouping that also has groupings of uh, subgroupings into it, right? So that's kind of why I want to do it, at least until we kind of figure out what's going to happen with stimulus or at least figure out what's going to happen with the elections. There's just so many wild cards that like, I'm like, fuck, I don't want to like put my money in the market, especially when th when I don't know exactly what's going to happen. That's just how I'm playing it. At least protect your chicken. Apple's the other thing. Apple, I do love, and I am currently in, oh, I can't say that. I am, <laughs> I might be currently in uh, because of the event coming out. I'm already, but also, hey, for me, I'm already close to my personal PT. When I, when I, when I, when I mapped it out and said, okay, what do I want to do? What I want to get from Apple? I saw reversal opportunity. I saw opportunity for me to get in. Um, even though it was within the week, I was already kind of watching it, but I wasn't talking about it yet specifically. Um, but yeah, I was definitely watching it. I saw my, I saw my chance to get in. I saw my chance to make a quick six bucks off of each share and I took it, you know, so I'm going to have to see what I'm going to do if I scale out or not. But I still think there's a lot of room to play specifically on Monday. Uh, if things go the right way into Tuesday and hopefully, you know, this is a whole new era. It's 5g era. So maybe the markets react well and it takes off from there. We'll see. But as we get closer to that 1845 level that we looked at earlier, it's going to be the, the, the more interesting tell of what's going to happen. All right. That's four of them. The other one's AMD. I fucking love AMD right now especially looking at that sexy ass week chart like i said it might be a little bit it might be a little bit too early for amd right now specifically if you look at the week over week chart uh but hey we see a pattern and we see that pattern re-emerging re here and that's what excites me uh like i said might be a, a little bit out but i think that once the market kind of dives into you know the acquisition and that it's going to help them play in a new sphere and then once console wars start kicking off later i mean shit later in the year fuck it's like next month or something like that we're going to really start seeing these catalysts boil up for amd uh because they've they've, they've been they've been especially for the past year day over day kind of like meandering a little bit but definitely had a really good consolidation i think we'll see that that other cup and handle forming as well but anyways catalyst corner party takeaways and social and then i'm gonna watch my team lose uh for football at least uh amazon is actually having a week week-long event could be some fun movement there i'm just not like specifically looking into amazon right now as like an investment um for myself but i think that's going to be a really interesting uh thing to look at especially since it's a week-long event you have a lot of catalysts that are going to be driving it there's going to be a lot of eyes at the amazon event i was like hey i want to only want to specifically uh, there's there's two events going on in my head uh, also the earnings but i don't really ch I, I use the earnings bank earnings more for like indicators not trading them because i don't like trading financials because they're boring and they don't do anything uh, even though they're undervalued, they're, they don't go anywhere. No one, no one fucking buys financials. Uh, so I use them more of as a measure. So that's not even a thing to me. I wouldn't even consider that uh, as a way to trade. But I had two events in my mind. I had Apple. I had Amazon. I chose to go with Apple specifically because when I looked at both charts, I thought, especially with that dip, it offered me the best setup into this next week. Uh, but Amazon is still having events. So Catalyst Corner, Party Takeaways and Social. Hey, Amazon's having a thing. But also like Party Takeaways. Hey, it's a very uncertain week for me coming up. We had a couple of good weeks for the market um, and this, but also this like post 912 dip rip, uh, like buy the dip, sell the rip is still in effect. And so that's what I get weary when markets are moving really good after 92 and, you know, we're, we're ripping. 
it's going to start dipping, I would think. So, hey, I dipped out for the most part. I got most of, you know, most of my position scaled out of by now and just only in things that I feel, you know, with, with pretty good certainty that, you know, it's going the right way, which isn't much, honestly, or, or at least hedging my best that, hey, I can go for an ETF here that's a little bit safer than, you know, losing, you know, po- possibly like going negative. But anyways, but with stimulus and certainty, we got earnings season kicking off. We got, you know, like I said, earnings with banks coming in. Early voting kicks off, I think, on 10-13, so like in a couple days. Um, and possible orange swan events, what I'm calling uh, Donald Trump's events, orange swan events. It's just not a time where I'm like playing anything outside of my plan, honestly. Last week, I did actually do that with DraftKings, and I was not rewarded. I took... I got bit by DraftKings and I thought I was trying to, I thought I was smarter than the market or whatever. I was, I was, I was ahead of the market, you know, and it's, it's being ahead is just the same as being wrong. You know, um, I saw an opportunity to get in. I saw a share price, I think of $52 that they came in with and I was trying to play it how I played, uh, or how I watched pin. I didn't actually, I don't think I played pin. I don't remember, but I watched it and I saw, Hey, they came in a share price. The, the, the price target came down to share price bounce off of that. It did for a while for DraftKings, but then a bunch of bad news came in. Like COVID started hitting NFL players. Like Cam Newton got COVID. The fucking Titans got the whole tight. I don't know how the whole team gets COVID, but basically Titans got COVID. And people were like, oh, are they going to close the NFL season? And of course, all the like DraftKings pin, they all, you know, gaming in general uh, took a bit or gambling and gambling in general took a big shit. Uh, because of COVID and like the uncertainty, you know, you have the NBA season maybe wrapping up tonight. You have, um, well, you have the uh, MLB season. Astro is still back. What's up? Uh, coming coming to a close within the next, I think, couple weeks or so. Uh, so you know, we have maybe a cooling off of those stocks. Uh, so we'll see. I but the great thing about DraftKings is I had a plan. The plan didn't go to plan. So my backup plan was to sell out at this price where there was no chart support. I did it. It, you know, the hardest part is losing and admitting that you're wrong and sca- and just exiting your position with that loss. It wasn't a loss to like my bank account. It was, but it was more, it hurt more my pride. Uh, but for those things, you just got to suck it up and say, hey, this is my plan for the better or the worst. It didn't go for the better. It went for the worst. I hit this. Hey, uh, next one, you know, and before, you know, like maybe even a year before I would have stuck to that, that losing trade and said, oh, I can make it up in a year or two years, maybe. And I think it will. It's Marcus. I think I think no matter your no, there's definitely bad positions you can't you can't get out of. But as long as you trade with a symbiote of a plan. The markets are going to come back eventually. It's how long and it's the opportunity cost of that money, because getting out of that position allowed me to get bigly into another position or hold that money for myself and look for those rips from the or those yeah those dips from the rips and then being a better position to like get that money back with the different stocks that's how i play it as well or at least that's how i play it but that all that to say hey have a plan trade your plan protect your chicken because the markets don't give a fuck about your money you have to give a fuck about your money take profits where you can and scale out if you don't if you don't want to just Get out completely if you think there's still juice in the tires of your of what you're watching. Then scale out of it a certain percentage, half, and then half, and then you're good. You know, like get your money where you can because the market's gonna get it back. All right. Anyways, like I said, hey, follow me here. Uh, give me a little subscribe here on YouTube. Make me feel good about myself. Help me out, but also get these. I think I'm gonna do smaller shows in the week about stuff that I'm watching. You know, five minute show, just little things here because like DraftKings, that was a really good one, a really good lesson to be learned that I could have like helped other people say, oh, this is how I was looking at it. And and then get some feedback from that. But anyways, uh, subscribe for me here on YouTube, but also real underscore bullish. Basically, anywhere you get your social poison. And I appreciate the support. And I will see you after the Texans lose. I'm calling right now. Astros winning and Lake Show winning. And we're going to have a green fucking Monday. Let's go. Peace.